Okay, the nervous system. This is a, a very rapid system in your body that allows different parts of the body to communicate and coordinate with each other. Now, one of the first things just to, to mention here is this phrase, nerve impulse. We don't talk about, although we might say things like messages being sent along um, neurons, cells. A nerve impulse is a much better term to be using. So, look first of all at what's known as the reflex arc. And you need to remember several bits to this. The first thing involved is receptor cells. Now, these are what are going to detect um, changes in your environment or detect a stimuli. It could be light, it could be sound, it could be taste, it could be pain, it could be temperature. Uh, it, it, it can be anything that where the environment changes, something that you can detect. So, for example, if I touch something with my hand, there are receptor cells in my skin. Do not call them nerve cells in my skin. They are not, a nerve is something different. Um, and in fact, if you find yourself writing nerve, it's more than likely you've got the wrong answer. You need to be talking about receptor cells. So receptor cells will detect the stimulus. A nerve impulse will then be passed along what we call the sensory neuron. And this will carry the nerve impulse to a coordinator. Now the simple way to remember the coordinator, it's either your brain or your spinal cord. Notice the spelling of cord here. Um, in terms of a reflex, a reflex is going to be a very rapid reaction to something um, that is, is going to prevent damage to the organism or increase its chances of surviving. And in fact most reflexes uh, the coordination is actually the spinal cord, although the information does actually also continue onto the brain. The spinal cord is usually the coordination in the case of reflexes. The nerve impulse is then passed along a motor neuron, and the easy way to remember this, I suppose, is to think of motor is to do with moving and movement, um, and motor neurons would pass towards effectors, which is either a muscle, hence the movement, or a gland. So a gland will be something like a salivary gland, produces saliva, um, adrenal gland squirts adrenaline um, into the body, into the blood. So you've got to remember these steps, those are the bits that you'll need to remember. A couple of examples of reflexes. Um, the blink reflex, when something comes towards the eye, um, the iris, which is the, the coloured part of the eye around the pupil, which can change size depending on if you're looking at uh, bright light or in dim light, the pupil will appear to get bigger. In fact, all that's happening is the iris around it is opening up. The pupil is just a hole. There's nothing actually there. So there's another reflex that will happen. You don't control these things consciously. You don't think about, well, I'll, I'll move, change the size of my pupil. You don't think I'm going to blink because something's coming towards me. It's very, very quick. They're protective things, um, protecting the, the, the organism from damage. Uh, you also need to be able to uh, label up a neuron. Now, in fact, this one uh, is a motor neuron. I'm about to draw. It's well, the very often very long cells, and at one end we'd have um, the cell body, which would contain the nucleus. You just don't see that sitting in there. You then, going away from the cell body, have a long um, part of the cell filled with cytoplasm, and it's called an axon. And this is carrying the nerve impulse away. From the cell body. At the end we would have some connections, um, lots of branching here, and this could connect either to other neurons or perhaps to uh, an effector, so to the muscle or the gland. We've also got, not on all neurons, but certainly on, on a lot of the ones you're going to come across, 
it looks as if um, I've drawn this like some little bricks this is something that's called um, a fatty sheath or if we're going to be a bit more scientific it's called the myelin sheath and it doesn't look um, the way I've drawn it in two dimensions if you imagine looking along the length of the axon so I was looking down it it's like a circle the the myelin sheath actually kind of winds around it like that so you'd have to imagine that the myelin sheath is, is more like that in three dimensions with the axon going through the middle of it what does it do well it speeds up the nerve impulse and it also acts as an electrical insulator if there's another axon nearby we're not going to get the signals being crossed over and, and two axons um, mixing their signals up the myelin sheath acts as this electrical insulator